Jake, I want to thank you for your time today. I've, I feel as if we're friends. What advice would you have for up and coming chefs, for apprentices? What would be the one thing that you would? You know, I reckon, Dana, you know, there, there probably is one thing, and I reckon, uh, you know, when I was a youngster, I was about 16 years old, and um, I kind of got into the industry um, at that age and, you know, worked at my local restaurant, and um, I kind of had a lot of support around me at that stage, and people who sort of, you know, pushed me to, that there were bigger and better things, so I moved outside of my own hometown. Um, that to, would have been a big, big step. It was a big move at 16, but also, you know, when you're young, you don't really know what else is out there. You don't know there's anything bigger and better. Um, and I came down to Circa at 17 years of age, and I saved all my money to eat in the restaurant. Um, and I remember coming down and just couldn't believe the, um, you know, the experience that I had. I couldn't believe that you could do that with food. And, um, and I just thought, you know what, I'll, I'll want to do that as well. And, uh, and I spent the next five years overseas and learning and um, you know, trying to get as much knowledge and um, information I could about food and restaurants. Um, and I worked at a couple of places over there, but then I thought that uh, you know, I came back to this restaurant, Circa, um, and I've been here for almost five years now. Um, I think that loyalty is a very important part of be becoming a chef. Um, it's quite easy to you know, work at a place for a year and six months and jump, but there has to be a stage where um, you, know, you, you start to display a little bit of loyalty and you'll soon find that um, you know, that loyalty in return, um, you know, some great things can happen for you. Big key word there, loyalty. <laughs> I reckon so. Good for you. <laughs> Thanks, Good for you. Thanks for your no time, worries. Jake. No problem. Okay, we're up. Okay, now Jake, the Circular Prince, it is well recognised for its wine cellars and um, how important is that for you designing menus? Well, it's, you know, it's really important when I'm trying to design certain dishes, you know, it's one of those things, wine uh, brings a lot of people here, we have a massive wine culture, um, the list is very extensive, um, featuring wines from all over the world, um, some that a lot of people can't buy. Um, and when I'm designing the food, it's you know a matter of sitting down with the sommelier, um, the wine waiters, and just discussing you know certain characteristics that really influence the flavours that we use in the food. Are we opening a bottle when we're having this little I conversation? Reckon we might be, yeah. <laughs> I reckon we might be, Dean. Yeah. Now, um, for you, white, reds, reds with me, or um, it doesn't matter. Well, I mean, look, it doesn't really matter. Um, you know, you can get a beautiful, lovely light Pinot Noir that uh, might go suitable with some fish, the earthly flavours that we talked about earlier. Um, you know, in these cold sort of wintry sort of months, like there's no reason why a beautiful um, a Pinot couldn't match, you know, even a salmon dish with the pumpkin knockies that we saw. Um, but of course, um, you'd have to be a pretty strong, you know, hefty white wine to match a lovely bit of Australian grass-fed beef, Absolute, I would say. Absolutely. And what about you? White or red? Um, well, I'm a bit of a red man, but I don't mind a glass of bubbles to start the night off on occasions. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs>